Hello friends, in this video we are going to convert this report into this report using Power Query. Seems difficult? Yes it is, but only until the end of the video. So let us start the video. So let us open the source report and look at the data. The first four rows are just for the information. So it contains the company name, address, the report name and the date it was run. I also noticed that the column headers falls under two rows. Unlike the traditional data where the column is just in a single row and similarly the data also falls in two rows. Also notice that somewhere in the middle of data there is a total cell along with the total with the currency and some information. So we have to get rid of this data as well. Also we have many blank columns narrowed down for formatting purposes. So why this report is like that? This is because this report is given as a hard copy to the customer and because of the paper size limitation, this report is truncated to the next row. So what will be our transformation approach to such type of report? Let me open a PowerPoint slide to explain you how we will solve this problem. Typically, we are used to this type of report and this is a straightforward report where the instructor will always take such report for an explanation. But this is not the case in the real world. Real world data can come in any format like this one. So what will be our approach? This is our blueprint of our data. So our approach will be separate the columns and the data falling in the second row and consolidate the data. Then we will merge the second row data into the first one. So this is our source file, close it, open a blank Excel workbook and in the data tab, select get data from file from Excel workbook. Navigate to the source data and open the file. So this is our Excel workbook name and this is our sheet name. So click it and press transform data. So this is our data into Power Query. Now as you see, uh, Power Query has applied few steps on its own. So actually this is not correct. So we'll delete it. First four rows are just for the information purpose. So we have to remove first four rows. Removing rows is a table related action. So table, all the table related actions are over here. Click it, go to remove top rows, type four and press OK. Also name the report. So we'll name it OS underscore report underscore one. Press enter. The next step is to separate the report like we have seen in our PowerPoint slide. So this is our report. First we'll do a row wise split and then we will consolidate the data. So go back to Power Query. We have named this OS underscore report one. Right click on OS report one. Make a duplicate of it. So this is now a similar report. Name it OS report two go to OS report one. So in OS report one, we will be working on the first columns and the first row data. And in OS report two, we'll be working on second row and the second row related data. So we, now we are in OS underscore report one. So this is our header. So we can promote this as a header. So you can click use first row as header and the data starts from row number four. So we have to get rid of the first three rows to so go to remove rows remove top rows and select three press ok now the next step is to eliminate this data from os report one and just keep this row of data so here i can see all the data required in os report one starts with mbg in unique number column so what i can do is filter which starts with mbg but the filter does not contain the text option why because this column has date as well as string. So not detected the data type properly. So click over here and select text data. So the formatting will be disturbed, but that's okay because we are anyways going to remove the second row data. Now you can go to filter, text filter. And here we have all the text related filters. So our data contains MBG, right? So press contain and type M B G press OK. And as you can see, our first row is sorted. Now there are many columns which are just a column because of the alignment issue, which we have seen earlier. So we can remove it by selecting all the columns and deleting it like this. 
or what you can do is you can select the columns which you want by pressing control and just clicking on the headers so now all the columns are selected which we want and we can delete the rest by right clicking and remove other columns now we are done with our os report one let us just save it close and load to only create connection okay we are creating only connections because we want output after merging this report and not the output of these reports all right so we have converted both the reports as only connection and there is no data seen over here let me open the reports again all right so now we will be working in os report 2 so os report 2 the first row is the headers of os report 1 so we do not require it so we'll go to remove rows remove top row and select one and press ok so this is our second row headers click use first row as header now we need these datas row number four row number six row number eight and so on so the first row the first two rows are null we'll just remove these rows remove top rows two okay the top two rows are removed and now we are interested in the second row data so as you can see there is a lot of noise over here too many data types like null then this is text this is date format that is the reason why power query has selected the neutral data type but here you can see it has detected the proper data type as date so i'll filter on this column and here we have only two type of data the one is date type and one is just a null so i'll untick null press ok and as you can see we have our data so we know we have only three columns in the second row so we can select the first three right click and remove other columns now our data is prepared it's time to merge it but before that let us see how many rows both the queries contain so the report number two contains 986 rows and report one contains 986 rows so the report rows are in sync now let us merge the data now merging requires some matching data but this is a single data source so we do not have anything in common so how we will merge it so let us try to merge it and see what happens so go to os report one go to home tab in merge queries select merge queries as new and it is saying me that select tables and matching columns to create a merge so there is no matching columns over here so what to do so i'll just press cancel and as we know we have equal rows in both the queries that is 986 rows so what we can do is we can go to add columns and in index column select from one so what it will do is it will insert one additional column and just increment the numbers after one so if you see the last row it will be 986 all right similarly we will do this in os report 2 as well so go to add columns index column from one and this will also contain 986 rows so now we have a matching row so go to os report 1 go to merge query as new os report 1 you will select os report 2 and go to the last column that is index column and select index column in both the tables so as you can see the selection matches 986 of 986 rows from the first table press ok and go to the last column and here you can see the queries have been merged let us name the query final report go to table and here you can see this double arrow option click this and these are the columns of your second query so select whichever columns you want already the index column is included so i'll just untick this and use original column name as prefix i'll just untick this press ok and here you can see our query is merged now i do not want few columns like margin access margin amount adp and the index column which i will select by pressing control and just press delete i will just have a look on the data type this is not detected why so i will just select currency this is good this is also currency this is your issuance date so it has to be date and everything seems okay 
Also, I want this applicant name to be my first column. I click on the column, right click and move to beginning. And now our data is transformed and ready to be uploaded on the table. So go to close, close and load to select a table, existing worksheet, select the data where you want to put it. So I'll select the fifth row because the first four row will be our information as we have seen in our raw data, then press OK and our data is extracted. So you can cross check by just checking the number of rows as we have seen earlier. Just to prettify this report, click anywhere on this table, go to table design and select any design which you like. I'll just keep this. If you don't want the filter button over here, you can just untick this and banded rows if you don't want, you can just untick this. Also, you can remove the grid lines just to prettify the things and uh, open your source data and copy the first four informational rows and paste it in your report. So this is actually merged. So we have a different option for merging. Select these columns, go to home and just remove the merge and center and select all the rows again, which is already selected over here. Press control and one, go to alignment and select center across selection press ok so as you can see it gives a merging effect without merging the columns and as of date you can give 31st jan as the date of running the report all right now what will happen if the new data comes in so let me just save this report name it as final report you can name it or you can name it outstanding final report transformed you can name it anything as you like go to my e colon and save let me close this report and this is our source data let me close this as well so we have our transformed data over here what will happen if the new source data comes in so i have a new source data so we were working on 31st gen file so let me take this data and replace it with our outstanding report now, if you are following along my YouTube videos, you must have seen a video where when we change the source data name, the query breaks. So let me just rename the source data properly. So this is our new data. Outstanding report will be the source data name. And if I again open our transform report, enable content, data query and connection, we have still not refreshed the file. So it is showing me the previous data that is 986 rows when we refresh the data. So as you can see, the report got changed and there are now 818 rows. So we don't have to do any work because we have already done the work in our reports. So this is the power of Power Query. So whenever the new data comes in, you just need to paste it and name it as your source data file name and Power Query will automatically take care of the rest. If you are still with me, I will give you a bonus tip on this. So if you want to make this report dynamic by keeping a filter on applicant name, I will make a small table over here, name it applicant and type any name as of now. So I'll just type Prater and I will select this to go to data and from table range. So my table has headers. Yes, I will take this press OK. So now this is transformed into a power query. I'll just name this query as name search and uh, press close and load to and I will create this only as a connection because I don't want any output. So I just want to reference this with the final report table. So I'll create only connection, press OK. All right. So I'll again go back to my name search by double clicking it and click on Prater, right click and press drill down. What drill down will do is wherever you put this query name, it will select Prater. So this is your placeholder for Prater or any name when you will put in place of Prater. All right. So now I'll go to my final report and uh, filter this text filter and I'll select contain. I'll type any name over here and press OK. So nothing has been generated. Why? Because Power Query is case sensitive. So, so you must recollect that all the applicant name were in capital letters. So we'll go to our name search. So here we have to apply a step to make this capital. But as you can see, there are no options to select. I can go one step ahead. That is change type. And here you can see now all options are available so i have to transform this spreader into capital so i'll go to transform format and uppercase all right so it is asking me are you sure you want to insert a step i'll press yes insert and as you can see now this has become dynamic so even if you put a small case it will make it first the uppercase and then it will drill down all right so now if you go to your final report select name search 
and press anywhere in this transformation area you can see this has now become a dynamic report press close and load to all right so if you want to change your table design you can go over here do a quick formatting and your report is ready now just to check whether this report is dynamic i will take another name that was turner so i'll type turner and uh, click outside and then go to data and refresh all and it will now give data for turner also one more we will check that is frank refresh click anywhere outside refresh all and it is giving the data for frank now if you are still with me there is one more bonus this is actually outside the scope of this playlist a small VBA code which will help you go to insert uh, shapes select any of the shape you want i'll select this rectangle one you can just prettify this by selecting no outline and any shape color i'll select this blue one all right i'll write refresh inside the button you can select the button and start typing refresh this formatting is optional but if you want to do it you can just create a shadow this looks neat all right now you go to developer tab if you cannot see the developer tab just right click anywhere over here go to customize the ribbon and here you can see developer tab you can tick it and press ok now in developer tab go to visual basic select your sheet that is sheet one double click it here you can simply type a simple code which you can copy paste so all the visual basic codes starts with sub and then you can give the code name refresh all you can give any name press enter so it will automatically give you the end substring then just write active workbook dot and the help will come type refresh all and press enter so you have created a code for refresh save it now it is saying the following feature cannot be saved in macro free workbook to continue save as macro yes close it just right click the refresh button go to assign macro and here you can select the macro which we have created double click it now if you type turner over here and press refresh will give you the data so all the time going to data and refreshing all you can just click this and it will get refreshed so i hope you have liked this video please subscribe this is a new channel i need your support to make such videos and believe me it really takes efforts to make such videos and it will help youtube algorithm to make my videos searchable please subscribe and i will see you in my next video thank you